All right, can I start class off with any questions? I, I've extended the homework for 2 6 till Friday um, because I think there's just still a lot more I can do with that section before you have to turn that in. And then, uh, so if I have any questions from 2 5, I'll address those right now. If it's from 2 6, then just hang tight. Can I turn this in? Yes. Oh, yeah, if you have those other problems, if you didn't turn them in last time for extra credit, then uh, you can just bring them up here and turn them in or hand them to me. Yes? Number what? Number four. Number four? Number four? Can I see your four? That's the one I actually got. I already did that in class last time. Yes, thank you. Anybody else for turning in that stuff? No other questions from uh, 2.5? Yes? Okay, what was your number five? Hold on a second, hold on, hold on. F of x equals what? 2 sine x plus sine squared x. Oh, I okay. At which the sine of x is Just set it there, it's fine. As long as your name is on one of them. All right, this is a great question, all right? I like this question. This is the type of thing that might appear at some point on a test. Uh, the question is asking to find, what is it, find the points on this function where the tangent line is horizontal. What does it mean, what does it mean to say the tangent line is horizontal? The slope of the tangent line is zero, which means that the, the what is zero? Derivative, all right? So when you say slope of tangent line is horizontal, what you mean is derivative is zero. So here's the derivative of this function. What is the derivative of a sum? Just the derivative of each one, right? Yeah. So what's the derivative of a constant times a function? It's the constant times the derivative of the function. So what's the derivative of sine x? Cosine x, but you still have the two there, right? Plus, now, sine squared x is composition. It's sine inside of, well, it's being squared, right? So what you have to do is you say, well, what's the derivative of something squared? Two, right? Two times whatever that something was. Times, according to chain rule, the derivative of what's inside, which would be derivative of sine, which is cosine x. Is that all right? That's okay? And now what I want to know is what makes this thing zero, right? What makes it zero? So I set it equal to zero. Now this is pre-cal at this point, all right? This is, this is in pre-cal what we call trigonometric equations. It's, it's an equation involving trig functions. And if you go back and look at anything you did in pre-cal, um, a lot of times when you're given tri trigonometric equations, they gave you like an interval where to look at the solutions, but here we have no interval. So that means we're probably gonna have an infinite number of answers. And the, the homework even says use n as your integer or whatever it says, right? Okay, so let me just work this out. If you, if you have a trig trigonometric equation like this, what you can do is you can try and factor it. <coughs> so I'm gonna, see if I have any common factors here where I have cosine. So I can actually pull out a 2 cosine x. I'll be left with 1 plus sine x equals 0. And then any time you have two things that multiply to be 0, you can set them each equal to 0. So I set 
2 cosine x to 0. I set 1 plus sine x equal to 0, and I try and solve. Any questions up to this point? Anyone? 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 Yes. Just like when you have a quadratic, right? When you factor a quadratic and you get something like x plus 4, x minus 3 equals 0, you set each factor to 0. Same exact thing here. That's what we're doing. Okay. So now, uh, well, this one right here, I can just divide both sides by 2 and the 2 is gone. Right? On this one, I can move the, the 1 to the other side and then get sine x is negative 1. And so this is where, you know, your knowledge of trig stuff is going to come into play. And depending on how it is you learned how to solve these things. I've shown you two ways in problems I've done in class up to this point. The way that I prefer to look at these is to look at the unit circle. Because the unit circle tells you everything you really need to know about sine and cosine. Cosine, on the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate of the point. So when I say I want the x-coordinate to be 0, I look at my unit circle and I say where to myself on, where on the unit circle is my x-coordinate 0? Up here and down here. Do you agree those are the only two points on the unit circle where the x-coordinate is 0? Okay. Let me go ahead and do this one while, I, while I'm here. When you go to the unit circle, sine is the y-coordinate. So you're saying where is the y-coordinate what? Negative 1. So where on the unit circle is the y-coordinate negative 1? Right here, 3 pi over 2. So that's what's going to make this equation true. If I plug in this point, this point, or this point. But wait a minute, isn't that point this point? Right, these are the same points. So I actually don't even need to consider that because these already cover that, don't they? With me? So now, what we need to do is we need to find a general way of representing these two sets of answers. Well, it's actually one set of answers, but I'm going to look at them as two different groups of answers. Every single angle that would take me to that point would be what? So what is that angle right there? Pi over 2? right? So the x would have to be pi over 2 plus I could then go from here I could go all the way back around and I would still be at that angle, right? So I could add a 2 pi to that and I'd still be there or I could go around twice which would be 4 pi, right? Or I could go around three times, right? Which would be 6 pi rotations. So what I add to this is any multiple of 2 pi that's where that n comes in. So any multiple of 2 pi added to pi over 2 would get you to this point, which would give you cosine of that angle would be 0, which would satisfy the equation being 0, which means your derivative is 0. Does that, does that kind of make sense? OK, that's just this. Now, how about these? What's the angle here? What's this angle here? That angle right there is 3 pi over 2. And again, can't I add a whole rotation and get back, or two rotations and get back, or three? So I need to again add 2 pi n. So if your x coordinate is this or anything, any, if, if it's this or add 2 pi n to it, any multiple of 2 pi, then you should get the equation be true. If you do 3 pi over 2 and you add any 2 pi n multiple, then your equation should be true. Now what they wanted though was the point, right? The point on the function. So what you need to do now is you need to figure out what y coordinate corresponds to each of these points on the original function. So what we need to do is we need to go and plug this in to our original function. So I go back to the original function which was f of x <coughs> equals, uh, what was it, 2 S cos sine? Uh, no, it was, it was 2, two sine, sine x plus sine squared x. Plus sine squared x. So that's the original problem, right? Not the derivative. And, and so I plug in this. Let me plug this in. 
Now, what's sine of pi over 2? Or go around a full rotation, you'll still be up at pi over 2, right? So what is sine of pi over 2? 1, right? Sine is the y coordinate. So this would be if I plug in pi over 2 or any multiple of it, any 2 pi multiple, then I should get 2 times 1 plus, now again, what's sine of pi over 2? It's 1, but then square it so you get 1 squared. And so you get 2 plus 1, which is 3. That makes sense? Then you have to go and plug these in. So let's see what the difference here would be. If we plug in 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, let's see how things change. What is sine of 3 pi over 2? So now you're instead of here, you're down here. Sine is the y coordinate. It's negative 1 instead of positive 1. So now you have 2 times negative 1 plus, now this is negative 1, but then we're going to square it. So that gives us a negative 2, then plus a 1, which is negative 1. Does that make sense? So if you, the y coordinates corresponding to these are 3, and the y coordinates corresponding to those are negative 1. I'm glad you asked that question. My intention was to do that problem today, so I'm glad you brought it. Which one? Okay, I won't do that one though. It's very similar. I'll, ha I'll be happy to go over with you after class or something like that, but since it's the same problem, different trig functions, I won't cover. Yeah, I think you either had that one, 2 sine x, uh-oh, infinity, here we come. Uh, you either had the, the, the 2 sine x plus sine squared x, or you had 2 cosine x plus cosine squared x. I think those were the only two problems that you could have had. All right. Um, do you mind getting the lights real quick for me? Thank you. It was 2 sine x, right? plus sine x squared. That's the graph of the function right there. You all see that? That's the graph of 2 sine x plus sine squared x. That's it. And what we figured out is that we had the tangent line, right, was horizontal at all these different places. And for some of them, you know, what was the first one that gave us 3? It was what, 3 pi over 2? Right? At 3 pi over 2, we got 3 to come out. At pi over 2, we got 3. So pi over 2 right here, we get 3. And there, the slope of the tangent line is horizontal. And then at 3 pi over 2, we got what? Negative, Negative 1. That would be here. Negative 1. Right? See, there's the y coordinate. So the, we're finding the points where it ha happens. Does that make sense? And so, of course, it happens, what, this one, and then it's going to happen again there, and then it's happened there, and then there, forever in both directions. So I just wanted to show you, I mean, geometrically, that's what, we, what's, that's what we were able to determine. All right. Lights, please. Do you mind getting the lights? I mean, I don't mind walking all the way over there if it's if it's trouble, if it's a bother. You're okay? All right. Anything else from 2.5? All right. Um, there's some stuff from 2.6 that I really need to cover. So, I want to look at, where 
Reapers. If I have it ready to go here. What was that? Right now, I think that you could probably do the homework uh, two six. You could probably get up through like the first eight problems, but even some of those might cause some issues. I'm going to start today uh, doing a problem very similar to number nine. All right. So I'm going to have something like this. Let's say we have x squared plus 2xy minus y squared plus x equals 5. And what we want to do is find the equation of the tangent line. Find equation tangent line at the point 3, 7. So first of all, we look at this. This is an equation, right? It has x's and y's in it. And this point lives on that graph. Whatever that graph is, this point lives on it. And you could check it by replacing your x and your y with 3 and 7. And it should, it should satisfy this equation. Do you want to check it real quick? What's 3 squared? 9 plus what's 2 times 3 times 7? So 2 times 3 is 6, right? Times 7 is 42. Minus what's y squared? 49 plus what's uh, x? 3. Does that equal 5? Yes, it does. You can add these up, right? This is, these two together is what? 51? 51 take away 49 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So that point lives on this graph. And what we want to know is what's the slope of the tangent line there. What is different about this equation and what we've looked at before? Can anyone tell me? What's that? It gives you equal to 5. So we have an equation, not just a function, right? But what does that mean graphically about this thing? We have, well, I guess, what, what's the difference between implicit and explicit? Why is the function here? If it's, if it's explicit, then you can solve it in terms of a single variable. But graphically, graphically, it may not be a function. It may not pass the vertical line test, which means that we may have more than one place where we have a tangent line. Like, I, de I described it with the circle. I said, you know, for this x value, there are actually two tangent lines, right? So when we look at something like this, we may have two tangent lines for a single x value, which is why we need to know the x and the y coordinate to talk about tangent. Okay, let's get to the derivative. So we're going to take the derivative of this. We're trying to find y prime. Because for the equation of any tangent line, we need a point and we need a slope. The point we have, the slope comes from the derivative. So let's take derivative, find y prime. Also remember from last class, this means we want to find dy dx, right? So implicit um, differentiation, what we do is, I did this little squiggly line, I said, okay, now I'm gonna take derivative on both sides using implicit differentiation. What is the derivative of x squared with respect to x? treating x like the independent variable. Just 2x, right? Just itself. Two, what we always thought it was. 2x. Plus, now, be careful here. Don't get ahead of yourself. We have 2x, 2 times x times y, right? I'm going to look at this right here as a product. The product is occurring between 2x and y. All right, so I have two different functions being multiplied together, don't I? So I must apply a product rule to those. The product rule says I need to take derivative of this first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one times the first one, right? So what is the derivative of 2x with respect to x? Just 2, right? 
So here's my product rule. Derivative of 2x is 2 times the second one, which is y. Plus, now the rest of the product rule. What is the derivative of y with respect to x? Y times y prime. Just y prime, right? The derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. And I told you in class last time, you could write it as y prime or dy dx, but you should be comfortable with both. They mean the, the exact same thing. <coughs> I'm going to put y prime here. Am I done? No. What am I missing? <coughs> Times 2x. So it is so, so important right now that you understand that these two terms right here came from the product rule being applied to that. Common mistakes I see is that people will take this and they'll say that the derivative of that is 2y prime. So they say, all right, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of y is y prime, and I'm done. But it's product rule, so you have two things come out of that. Now, the next piece, minus, what's the derivative of y squared? So first there's, first there's power rule, right, the 2. The 2 comes out in front, we have 2 times y to the first power. I'm not even going to put the power there. But then chain rule says now you go inside and you take derivative of what was in there. What's in there is y, isn't it? And derivative of y is y prime, not just 1. So I have a y prime sitting next to this. Don't confuse my 1. I, I think I'm going to erase the 1 because I don't want you to confuse it with the y prime. Any questions on that? Very, very important you see that. This right here is a derivative of this piece right there. Plus, what's the derivative of x? One. one. Why is the derivative of x one, but the derivative of y is not one? Because we're doing derivative with respect to x. OK? So derivative of x with respect to x is one, but derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx, which is y prime. Now I need my equal sign, and then what's the derivative of 5? 0. Derivative of any constant by itself, sitting there by itself, is 0. And that's it. I mean, that's the derivative. Now what we need to do is we need to isolate y prime. And do you see that if you don't get y primes, then you're never going to be able to solve for y prime? So anytime you do implicit dif differentiation, your y prime has got to appear somewhere. If it doesn't, then Something's wrong. Okay, everything with the y prime is going to stay on the left. So that means y prime times 2x is here. I have minus 2yy prime. And then I have everything else doesn't have a y prime, right? So I move everything else to the other side of the equation, which means they become negative if they're positive. So negative 2x, what else goes over there? Two negative 2y, and then minus 1. Now why is it that we isolate y primes? So, so we can factor it out, right? So we can get the y prime factored. So we take the y prime out, we're left with 2x minus 2y equals negative 2x minus 2y minus 1. And finally, divide through by 2x minus 2y. So if I divide this side of the equation by 2x minus 2y, it goes away. If I divide this side by that, what happens? Don't cancel them. Right, you can't cancel those. That, that y, I don't like it. Now I, now I know what the slope of the tangent line is, right? That's what it is. If I know x and y, I can tell you the actual slope numerically. And that I actually have a point, don't I? So now it's time to figure out what the slope of that tangent line is at the point in question. Any questions on this part of it, though? We're OK? All right, so now let's go back to the original problem. And let's take the point. So at 3, 7 y prime is equal to what? So I'm going to replace all my x's here 
with threes, all my y's with sevens. So it becomes negative two times three minus two times seven minus one over uh, two times three minus two times seven. Does everyone see what I'm doing there? Negative six, take away 14, take away one. So negative 21 on top over six, take away 14, right? Negative eight, negative over negative is positive. So 21 over eight, boom. That's the slope of the tangent line. That's our M, isn't it? That's the M. So this is M for our equation of our tangent line. What is the general form of a line that we use in this class whenever we're trying to do our tangent line? So now we go to this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I replace my x1 and y1 with 3 and 7. I replace my m with 21 over 8. Is this going in? to your brain? Do you all understand this? Is it making sense? All right, now I'm actually going to get y and solve for it here just because I always like my, li my lines to be of the form y equals mx plus b. But that's just me and, you know, you should be comfortable doing that also if need be. So I'm going to take my y minus 7. I'm going to distribute 21 over 8 through my parentheses first, which gives me, well, unfortunately, that doesn't reduce. So 63 over 8 here. And then add 7 to both sides. So I just distributed here and here. So y equals 21 over 8x. And if I add 7 to this, right, I'm going to be getting a common denominator, 56 over 8. So negative 63 plus 56 is negative 8 over, is that negative 1? I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm adding 7 here to this. Negative 63 over 8 plus, isn't this 50? Oh, I, don't, I must have done some math wrong there in my head. 56 over 8. I said negative 1. What is that? Negative 7 over 8, right? Negative 7 over 8. I don't know why initially I was thinking negative 8 over 8, but negative 7 over 8? Yes? Got it? All right. Do you mind grabbing the lights again for me? Whenever you, you know you get a chance. So that's the equation. Of the slope. Yeah. What is that? What the hell is that? Whoa. I'm go back to my good old wind plot here. It'll it'll come up. Good night. <laughs> so when you, when you open up Winplot and you go to put in an equation, there's actually a little, a little um, option up here where it says explicit and then implicit. Explicit means they just, they put y equals and then you just put in, you know, whatever, x sine x or whatever it is your function is. But they also give you the option to put it in if it's implicit which means that you could put in the equation just exactly the way it appears. So I'm going to go to implicit and I'm going to put in our problem which was x squared plus 2xy, right, minus y squared plus x equals 5, right? 
And from there, I'll have it graph. All right, there we go. There's our, there's our graph. Does, is that a function? No, right? I mean, look at it right here. Fails the vertical line test right there, doesn't it? And then I will have it now graph, graph our line. What the hell is going on here? I will have it graph our line. And our line was 21, no, what is it? 21 over 8, right? X minus 7 eighths. Now, what should I see here? What should I see? I see a line that is tangent to this curve, right? Where, though? At 3, 7, right? I don't think it's going to fit in here. Hold on. There's my line. I don't have enough of the graph. Uh, not sure why. Three seven is up here, right? That's three seven. This is going to be somewhat anticlimactic here. For some reason, Winplot is not only graphing this part of my function. So I'm going to try something real quick because I really want you to believe this. Does it stop at five? Well, it stopped. Stopped for some reason. I don't know why. Um, x squared plus two x times. What's that? No, because that's part of that's part of the um, graph, so that's okay to have that equals five. Let me see. There, it did a little. It did a little more because I had the window zoomed too much, I think, initially. There. Okay. Can you all kind of see that? <laughs> Three seven is about right there where my cursor is. And so that curve is the, the red curve right here. And so our line should go through 3, 7. It should be tangent to the curve at that point. And that's what we've got. Do y'all believe it from the picture? Okay. All right. Lights, thank you. All right, the next one I want to do is going to be finding the second derivative of one of these things. So let's find the second derivative. Y double prime if we have x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals a. Alright, so this is an, this is an Im implicit equation. All right, we're going to just leave it as it is and we're going to take the derivative on both sides. Now the a here is a what? A is a constant. All right, so what is the derivative of x to the fourth with respect to x? 4x, 4x cubed. Right? 
plus, now what's the derivative of y to the fourth? 4y four four y cubed, but then you have the y prime next to it. Because you have to go in, take derivative of y, which is y prime. Equals what? Equals zero, right? So now, let me solve for y prime. Let me get y prime by itself. So I have 4y cubed y prime equals negative 4x cubed. So I've moved the, uh, moved the 4x cubed to the other side. And now I will divide through by what? 4y. So y prime equals negative 4x cubed over 4y cubed, which means we have y prime equals what, negative x cubed over y cubed? Do you agree? Fours are gone. Is that alright? That's the first derivative. I want the second derivative. So the der second derivative is the derivative of the derivative, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this right here and I'm going to take derivative of it implicitly. So derivative of both sides exactly the way we just did. So now here's what I'll write. I'll start it over here. Here's y prime equals negative x cubed over y cubed. Here's my differentiation. So what is the derivative of the derivative? What's the derivative of y prime? This side. What's the derivative of the derivative? The second derivative, right? That's what I'm looking for. You see? And then on the right side, what do I have to do? Quotient rule. Quotient rule. So here's what I'm going to do. This negative sign is like a negative 1 in front of everything, isn't it? So I'm just going to put a negative out in front of this. Now, here's my quotient rule. Quotient rule says I have to take the derivative. So here's my negative. I'm just ignoring it. I need to do derivative of the top times the bottom times the derivative or minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared, right? So what is the derivative of the top with respect to x? 3x squared, right? Times the bottom, y cubed. Minus, now be careful, derivative of the bottom. 3y squared what? y prime. Don't forget that. It's still chain rule there. What else? Time, hold on. Times the top x cubed all over y cubed squared. Okay, so let's just revisit this. You have the negative in front because negative is like a negative one constant in front. Quotient rule. Derivative of the top, boom, times the bottom here, minus derivative of the bottom, 3y squared y prime times the top here, all over the bottom squared. That's the second derivative. Now let me check the instructions if on this. Yeah, your final answer needs to be in terms of y and x only. In other words, you should not have any y primes show up. So, see this y prime? We don't want it there. But what was y prime? This right here, right? So I'm going to go into this answer right now. I'm going to replace y prime with this. So I'm going to go in here and go negative 3x squared y cubed minus 3y squared times y prime, which was negative x cubed over y cubed x cubed all over y to the sixth. Y'all see how I did that? Just replaced this y prime with, with what it was. And now let's try and clean this up a little bit. Because it will clean up.
Does anyone have any questions? No? All right, so we have negative 3x squared y squared uh, plus, why is it plus? Minus and minus, right? This is like a negative one, I can just pull it out in the front. I still have a three. How many x's will I have? Six, six x to the sixth, because this x cubed and this x cubed can come together, become an x to the sixth. How about y's? This was a y squared here, right? And this is a y cubed on the bottom. So it cancels, I should just have one y on the bottom, shouldn't I? Just one y on the bottom. So I'm actually going to have to write it like this, over y. Then all of this over what? Uh, this negative is outside the whole thing. So make sure that negative comes outside this fraction right here like this. All over what? y to the sixth? I can still go a little bit further. I could put the two numerator fractions together, right? Couldn't I put those together by getting a common denominator? What would you get if you put those two together? You would have to introduce, over here on this one, you'd have to introduce a y over y, wouldn't you? So that they have the same denominator? And then you could force the two together. So you would have, what, 3x squared y cubed plus 3x to the sixth oh. all over. So you see, yes? Where did the y squared yeah. the top Where did the y squared come from? Yeah. Was it y cubed? Yeah. Oh, it was y cubed? Yeah. Okay, I just wrote it down wrong. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm glad you. Was that it? Was that the only thing? Okay, so what should it turn into here then? Sorry, y to the fourth. I'm glad y'all caught that. Thank you. Do you get what I did here though? Just to get a common denominator so I can put those two together. This y and this y cubed should be y to the fourth there. And then what? It'll be the same denominator. So you put them together, you just get y on the bottom, right? But then that's all over what? All over y to the sixth. And then you can look at y to the sixth as being y to the sixth over one and then doing the reciprocal. So your final, final answer will be negative 3x squared y to the fourth plus 3x to the sixth over y to the seventh. way off on that. Okay? What, that all right with you? So an honest show of hands here. How many of you were able to watch the video for 2-7? 2-7, that's the circles that were growing. So see, let me see again. I need to see how many people. 2.6, okay. All right. Um, with, since that's what uh, y'all are showing me as far as the number of people who have done it. Let me, uh, let me do one more of these and then I'm going to start 2-7. Find equation, tangent, line, 
to y squared y squared minus 4 equals x squared x squared minus 5 at the point 0, negative 2. So again, we have an implicit equation. So what we need to do is figure out what the derivative is so that we can figure out the equation of the line. Any suggestions about the derivative? Put the y squared in, multiply it in. What do you all think of that? Multiply the y squared in, multiply the x squared in. I agree. Let, we should do that because if we don't, what are we going to have to do here? Product. Product rule, right? But if we distribute this in, it's just going to be individual power rules on each one. So let's do the distribution. That's a, that's a good start. So we'll come back to that point in a second. Uh, I'm not, this is not a derivative yet, right? That's just distribution of the y squared and x squared through. And now at this point, I'm ready for my derivative. Okay, raise your hand when you have the derivative. I'm gonna come by and I'm going to check it. I'll be right there. And then once you get it, see if you can work the rest of the problem out. Neil, I have um, your exams uh, that you turn in your corrections. Is that you? Is yeah. That you? Okay. And then is that you also? Yes. Okay. Victoria? You know what? If you get the derivative, check with your, check with your neighbor. I want everyone to agree at your table. Nicole? Darren? Marissa? Alex? Rodney? When your table is unanimous and everyone understands, raise your hand, I'll come by. So that's the derivative, where is it? What is this? Remember, when you take derivative, all you have is just two sides of an equation. You don't have anything out there, right? Your equation comes from this. Okay, yep. So 4y cubed y prime, 8y y prime. Okay, good. Now solve for y prime. Go ahead and try and find the equation of the tangent line. Okay, everyone agrees with this or what? Did you all look at the derivatives? Okay, I'm just checking this. That looks fine. Okay, keep going. Try and get the try and get the uh, equation of the tangent line now. Okay. Yeah. Paul Ramos. John Sherman. These are old things. I need to get back to y'all. Paul Ramos. John Sherman. Pamela Vargas. Vargas. Pamela? 
Gabriel, I think. That's one, sir. That's you? Okay. That's all right. Francisco, this was the one that everyone wasn't ready for. Francisco, I think Francisco may not be here. Alex, uh, the, uh, uh, another Alex. Francisco, Francisco, Jake, Travis. You're Travis. Elias. James. I don't know what this is. Oh, corrections. Pamela D. Did y'all get the derivative yet? Yes. Did y'all get the equation tangent line yet? Working on it right now. Don't forget, you still got still got work to do. Where you got? So here's the derivative right there. That looks right. Yep, and solve for y prime, and then keep going. Remember, you want the equation of the tangent line. That's the. Don't set it equal to zero. You want the equation of the tangent line. Yep. Here's here's how this is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to see if your table gets the equation of the tangent line, and then see if everyone agrees. And then if everyone agrees, and I plot it, and it's right, everyone gets a hundred on this on the quiz today. But if it's wrong, everyone gets a zero. So we better agree. So everyone needs to agree in the class. Does anyone have the equation tangent line yet? You got the equation tangent line? Okay. I'm not. I don't know what the answer is. But like, I'm gonna graph it. I'm not gonna check your work. Nope. Okay, Neil. These are extra credits. Let's see corrections. Haley. Pamela Vargas. Two minutes. It's a positive to they want to get over okay. there. No, it's fine. God, thank you.